You are watching a Pause and AIDSMeds.com interview from the 47th ICAC Conference in Chicago. Uh, welcome. This is Peter Staley with AIDSMeds.com reporting from ICAC 2007 in Chicago. I'm here with Dr. Joe Aaron, uh, professor of medicine from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. You'll remember Joe from our coverage in Sydney. He gave us a great overview of what was in the pipeline. Uh, welcome, Joe. Well, great. Thanks for inviting me. It's terrific. We're standing here in front of uh, a pharma fest, as I call it. This is, this is uh, at most of these conferences, all the pharma companies set up these huge booths, uh, uh, trying to sell their wares, basically, sure. tell the doctors what's going on with their drug, and all the HIV drugs are back there, mixed in with some antimicrobials. Lots of antimicrobials <laughs> here. Lots. Given, given the nature of this conference. Right. Um, this morning we had a great session, and we're going to talk about that. Sure. Uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, some news on uh, stuff that's in the pipeline. Okay. And then we're, uh, in a second uh, uh, video cast, you and I will discuss <laughs> some news on drugs that are already on the market, but sure. uh, might change how people use treatment. Absolutely, sounds let's, great. Let's start with uh, the the latest data on a drug that's just about to come out, sure. Icentris, uh, Merck's new right. integrase inhibitor. We heard some 48-week data from a phase two trial. Right. Um, there was a dose ranging study. Did it add anything? to well, what we know about Icentris? I, I don't think it added a whole lot, except for it added some durability information. It's kind of a complicated study because there were three different doses, and then at 24 weeks, um, patients kind of changed uh, to the current dose, which is 400 milligrams twice a day, and it presumably will be at the approved dose, though we don't know for sure yet. Um, but I think it gives us um, encouragement that the, the drug will be durable, that we will see kind of um, prolonged activity in people who suppress uh, below 50 copies. Um, the also, drug was approved on 24-week data, but this is... Well, the drug was actually approved on 16-week data uh -huh. at, by the FDA, so so this is, what, three times as much yeah. information. Now, a much smaller group of people, so there's a little bit more variability. You know, we see they're kind of different numbers of the proportion suppressed below 50. I think the range was... 46 to 64 percent, depending on the dose. On a, on a highly treatment experienced. Very treatment experienced. So um, in this particular um, study, there wasn't, uh, darunavir wasn't allowed, and, and uh, tiprenavir, ritonavir wasn't allowed. So the, so the background therapy in this phase 2b study was actually quite a bit weaker than in the benchmark study or the duet studies mm -hmm. that we talked about in, um, in Sydney. It's still showing to be a very powerful drug, though, with pretty low toxicities. Right. I think that the tolerability appears very, very good. Um, I think the one thing we're learning, I think, about integrase inhibitors in general is if you have virologic rebound, which, again, doesn't occur that commonly, and you need that kind of strong background therapy, but if you have rebound, you are going to see resistance, most likely. Right. Yeah, the resistance happens kind of like the non nukes um, yeah, I, I, people try to make a comparison like the non-nukes, like the PIs. Um, resistance occurs in the majority of patients that rebound, so that's similar to the non-nukes. On the other hand, you tend to see multiple mutations with a primary mutation and compensatory mutations, which is a little bit like the protease inhibitors. Right. So I think it, we're going to have to say it's like the integrase inhibitors. Right. Staying on the same class, integrase right. inhibitors, we also heard about Probably the next one that will come through the pipeline. Right. Uh, Gilead has a drug, uh, and they had follow-up data from its treatment, again, a very highly treatment experience group, right. phase two dose ranging study uh, for Elvitegravir. Right. Elvitegravir. 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 Right. Elvira, like, like <laughs> Mistress of the Dark or whatever it is. Elvitegravir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Key differences between Icentris and Alvitegravir. Okay, so so one big difference is, of course, that um, uh, the Raltegravir, Icentris, is likely about to be approved. And Alvitegravir is just starting their phase three program. Um, so that's a big difference. But but in terms of, of uh, kind of uh, clinical differences, one, um, the raltegravir is glucuronidated, so it's metabolized a different way. So it's going to have different and probably fewer drug-drug interactions. On the other hand, it has to be given BID. Um, L twice a day. Twice a day, sorry. L-vitegravir 
is metabolized by P450, which is the same enzyme that metabolizes protease inhibitors. So it's going to probably have more drug-drug interactions, but it is going to be combined with ritonavir, and it's going to be boosted, so it's going to be given once a day. So that's a substantial difference. Yeah, um, Centris, you don't need Norvir, and this one right. you're going to. You're right, exactly right. So, so this drug is being developed specifically with Norvir. So it's not being developed without Norvir. What about uh, the comparative resistance profiles? Are they going to be uh, cross-resistant? That's a, that's a great question. I, I think, you know, Vicki Johnson later in the session this morning kind of went over some of the resistance to the integrase inhibitors. And I think probably the safest thing to say is it looks like there's likely to be a substantial degree of cross-resistance. It may not be 100%. There may be patients that fail one of these, uh, like raltegravir, and still um, might respond to elvitegravir. But I think for us as practicing clinicians and, and, and for people with HIV, I wouldn't hold hope that you know we can obviously sequence these drugs. It looks like there's going to be a substantial amount of cross-resistance. Um, we heard some very exciting news about uh, a drug in very early development, right. but it's a, it's very different from every other drug people with HIV are used to. Right. Uh, it's it's pro uh, 140. 140 from Progenix, a right. uh, small little company. Uh, they had follow-up data from it's a it's a CCR5 targeting drug, right. but it but it's different. It's a monoclonal antibody. Right. Can you explain? Uh, and and at IAS they had stunning data where they said. Right. Viral loads. You take one. You take an injection of this stuff, right. and the viral load goes down 90 percent, and it stays down 90 percent right. for two to three weeks after one injection. So, um, so this is a CCR5 inhibitor. So, um, it attacks the same step in the virus life cycle as Maraviroc, uh, cells entry, and and Vicrivirac, um, but it works in a different mechanism. And these are all entry these inhibitors. These are entry inhibitors. So, the, and and all three of those drugs bind to CCR5, but um, this Pro140 actually binds in a different way, blocking the receptor in a different way, um, and because it's an antibody, it has a big plus and a big minus. The big plus is it has a very long half-life, so probably it's going to be dosed once a week, maybe even once every two weeks, so that's a big plus. The negative, of course, is that it can't be swallowed. It's not going to be ever be a pill. Right. It's either going to be an IV injection, um, IV infusion, or perhaps a subcutaneous injection. And they, they say they're going to, the next trial they're going into, they're they're going to use a sub-Q. subcutaneous injection, which you know uh, uh, people can give themselves. Hopefully, right. uh, sure, people should, should be able to give it to themselves. If it's one shot once a week or every other week, that's you know very different than currently with Fusion, where it's one shot twice a day. Right. Um, but we need to learn a lot more. I mean, how stable is it? Are patients going to have to mix it themselves and all right. those sort of things? Right. But, but I think that the promising data was just as you said. It wasn't a new study. It was the same study right. that they did and uh, that was presented at Sydney. Um, so it basically showed this prolonged activity with a single dose, and it showed that um, it may be that even higher doses might even get a little bit more activity. So I think that's what the company is going to be shooting for. Right. Well, it's, it's one that we're definitely going to be following. Uh, thanks for this overview of the experimentals. We're going to get right back to you on uh, the, the currently approved drugs that had some news out, and uh, we thank you for joining us once again. Great. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure.